Time now for Grand Adventures Return, presented by Grand Wagoneer. Tell you what, it was a grand adventure for Wuning Yin of China, who secured her first major title with a birdie on the 72nd hole in the final round of the KPMG Women's PGA Championship. With the win, she also becomes one of the youngest champions in the history of this event. The youngest? About Brooke Henderson back in 2016. Sahali got the better of Lydia Ko. She was 18 years, nine months, in a couple of days. Yanni Singh, Sandra Post, Sari Pack, and Rooney Yin at the age of 20. Let's hear from the champ. Miss a lot, but I still feel so unreal right now. Um, I mean, after, before today, I didn't even think about it. And uh, after night holes and when we at a clubhouse, I started thinking about, oh, maybe I have a chance to win this championship. Yeah. All right, we'll start opening it up. I will start over there with Jeff. You were giving yourself some chances and, and didn't make any putts to the first 10 or so holes. What finally started working with the putter that got you going? Um, I think I had a couple chances on the front nine, but I just um, missed it. But um, yeah, my caddy and I just were talking about just be patient and uh, plus will fall. And uh, I, I think on the back night, I have a couple, like maybe 12 footer. And uh, yeah, just make, made it. 13, 14? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, at age 20, what is any of this sunken in yet? Being a major champion out here? I'm sorry? At, at age 20, has any of this sunken in yet? that you're a major champion out here? Not really. <laughs> I mean, um, yeah, uh, when, when I was walk on, walking this 10, um, I just thought, I just said, oh, wow, major ch winner. It's amazing. I, I, yeah, it's just unreal. Yeah. All right, Bethann? Yes, how much were you looking at leaderboards down the stretch, and did you know what that last putt meant? Yeah. Uh, I look at the leaderboard all the time because um, I like to look at the leaderboard because I know where, what position I'm at. Um, yeah, just I think I was on 18T. I just look at the leaderboard. I saw, oh, I have one shot lead. And then just when I walked down to the fairway and I saw Yuka make, made a birdie there, and I, just, I know I have to make birdie on 18 to win this. Yeah. So can you walk us through that one? And speaking of leaderboards, bogey-free 67 for Ronin Yin at famed Baltusrol, the lower course of one-shot victory over another major champ, the 2021 U.S. Women's Open champ, Yuka Sasso. Joined now by the Hall of Famer, Judy Rankin, on this Monday. It is great to see you. What was your big takeaway from the week that was at Baltusrol? Um, well, you know, I played that course when I was 16, so um, I was very interested to see that, and uh, it was uh, it was just it was great to watch. It was great to watch so many players play it so well, at um, I guess an average of about 6,500 yards. So um, it was it was it was just fun, and um, in such pristine condition, which I think it almost always is. Uh, and I, 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 you know, I marvel, and I marvel every day at how good today's players are. Speaking of how good they are, Ronin Yin hits her last 37 greens in regulation uh, during a major championship under that pressure. Does that give you a sense, Judy, that, that she has the kind of staying power where you would expect her to be a, a recurring factor in major championships when she has that kind of composure so early? Yeah, well, there's a couple of things that I thought of when I read that. First of all, a long time ago, an old sage in the game said, you know, uh, U.S. Opens and those kind of golf courses, which is certainly the KPMG um, kind of uh, site we've had for the last number of years, but this is one of the great ones, Baltusrol. Um, you think that this man said, you think that the best ball strikers are going to be the best, and usually they are, but you cannot discount the fact that on the hardest golf courses, on the most difficult tests, everybody misses some greens. So that makes it even a bigger deal, I think, that uh, this player, Roning, um, you know, hit, what, what, what did she hit, Six, 
66 of 72 greens. That is so amazing in any form of golf, men, women, the best, um, the best juniors, the best high school players, the best male professionals. I mean, that is a stunning number. Speaking of staying power, Judy, Rose Zhang has already proven her worth on the LPGA, winning her debut at Liberty National. Now she finishes tied for eighth at the KPMG Women's PGA Championship. What kind of advice, if any, would you give to her to keep things simple as the expectations and the eyeballs continue to, to grow on this player? I think the best advice anybody can give to Rose Zhang is don't give her any advice. She seems to have a handle on things. Um, she's very, very composed, aside from being what may turn out to be one of the world's great female golfers. Um, she, has, she has the right um, look and mental attitude about the game, I think. So um, that's, that's something that I think most players, even some very talented players, envy uh, when somebody just has the right... Uh, the right attitude and they don't get ruffled very often and it's in fact in her case we haven't seen her get ruffled at all and if if you would have gotten ruffled it might have been off the 18th tee judy some pretty prominent names missed the cut at baltas raw like jennifer cupcho and patty tavakan kit nelly corda missed it by six strokes only made three birdies in, in 36 holes. Uh, it's been something of a stop-start year for Nelly with various physical issues. Were you surprised how far she was off her game? Very much so. Uh, I guess she has a little history of taking some breaks, whether it's um, for physical reasons or whatever, and coming back and playing pretty strong. Uh, I think, I don't know, the world of golf today is so very difficult that um, even if you're at the very top of the game, uh, you, you've, you've got to be in the mix uh, more often. It's, it, just, it, it comes naturally to professional golfers to go compete, but I'm telling you there's a thing that we all know as tournament tough, and you've got to be that to play the best players and to play at the best courses. Judy, you mentioned playing at Baltus Raw at 16. We're in this era uh, where the women are playing the best golf courses on the planet, whether it's the old course or, or Muirfield, Baltus Raw, Pebble coming up next week. As a player, did it matter? Did you feel inspiration? Could you feel the soulfulness of a place, the history of a place? You know, if I'm going to be 100% honest, I would have to say... Rarely, but the, the place that turned me around with the history of the game and so on was playing at Sunningdale in England, outside of London. Uh, you know, the course was uh, near, not, not, not quite there, but um, nearly 100 years old at that time, and it was very much weathered by time. When we first played there, there was no irrigation system anywhere. Eventually, there was an irrigation system on the greens, and now, of course, it's different. But there was something about playing golf there that made me realize the game had come from somewhere. And, um, and I had played as a 16-year-old again at Carnoustie. And that made me think the game shouldn't have come from somewhere because it was just way too hard. Weather was terrible and it was way too hard. But um, uh, Sunningdale was the place that started that for me. And then as my life went on in television and being at so many of the great courses and so on, I have, you know, enormous um, appreciation and respect for all these places that the women are now um, getting to uh, show off their wares. Well, our conversations are always too short. We wish we had more time. Judy, thank you so much for your time on this Monday. I want to tell you just one thing. Um, Roning Yin on the 18th tee gives a lot of weight to being a leaderboard watcher. It's mm. a great sure. point. Tiger Woods... Uh, like watching the leader reason she's won 26 times you know yeah